Greetings, everyone. This is Theme Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another episode review from Season 5 of The Loud House. Today's episode is titled The Loudly Bones. First, we'll discuss the plot, and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. The episode begins with Lisa discovering what she believes to be a dinosaur bone from an era not even her radiometric dating machine can determine. But it turns out to be remnants from her family's Thanksgiving dinner, and her machine wasn't working properly anyway. Curse you, Lana and your cream puffs. But before she can retract her discovery she posted about in her newsletter, she gains attention from the media and the Royal Woods Museum paleontologist, Dr. Alvarez. She gives Lisa her own educational programming show, which would help get kids interested in science, and she becomes a celebrity as a result. However, her fame falls apart along with a dinosaur during a live broadcast because she stole a real bone from a real dinosaur and replaced it with her fake one the night before. Lisa confesses to lying about her discovery, yet Dr. Alvarez doesn't want her intelligence to go to waste and offers her the chance to give guided tours of the museum as a way to gain back her trust. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. I'll start off by saying out of every Lisa episode of Season 5, this is honestly her weakest, some of it being her fault and some of it not. However, I won't say this is her worst episode overall. I already expressed my complaints about that in Making the Grade, so feel free to check that one out whenever you get the chance. Anyway, depending on how you feel about her stance, Lisa rationalized her need to lie about science in order to get kids interested in the subject by saying the ends justify the means. Even though she found the concept of doing that to be ironic and how it goes against her character of being factually correct about pretty much everything. The fact she was barely quietly saying this to a loud speaking Todd in front of Dr. Alvarez, who wasn't even standing that far away, just baffles me. But the baffling doesn't end there. It would appear Lisa had taken her lesson from House of Lies and twisted it for her own benefit. That's where I have a mixed reaction to what she wanted to do. The episode from season 3 had Lisa learning that sometimes it's appropriate to lie in order to maintain social harmony, which is absolutely true and we've all done it in our daily lives. However, I wouldn't quite put the concept of her lying in this episode on the same level as House of Lies, because the stakes of her lying in this episode are far greater and hold much more serious consequences. Imagine if she had gone in front of the camera with a bone that turned out to be her dad's Turgusan from The Loudest Thanksgiving, and it was proven to not be from a real dinosaur at all, despite what she put out in her newsletter and what the media had been covering. Those impressionable children would develop a complete distrust in everything she would have to say moving forward, not to mention calling into question what else she could have been lying about on her program, ironically titled, facts matter. As a quick side note, I like to think of Lisa's show as her version of Bill Nye the Science Guy, where she can get kids interested in science and doing so in a way that doesn't turn them off like she did in the episode School of Shock. Still, you can't refute what Lisa said about the ends justifying the means. The fact is Lisa's show was becoming popular and kids were paying attention and learning from it. Clearly she became an influence and some kid was grateful when he thanked her for teaching him that the earth was in fact round. I don't know who was giving this flat earthing kid his previous information, so you can see how Lisa brought him into the light. You can imagine how he might have gone back to believing the Earth wasn't round following what could have been an even worse disaster if Lisa's big lie was revealed at the museum. That's where the final four minutes of the episode took place, and that was where the story started to literally fall apart. First off, how incredibly convenient that a museum full of priceless artifacts just happened to have an unlocked door. I guess it's better than the old-fashioned way of breaking and entering while fighting off and or hiding from security guards. Remember, Incognito Laboratories had better security than this museum. So who exactly is protecting this place at night? Ben Stiller? Second, Lisa used her dad's failed attempt at making some kind of sauce as glue for the fake bone. So what happened to that adhesive she made back in the episode Spell It Out? It seems like her application for a patent on that stuff conveniently wasn't going to work out for the plot of this episode. Of course it didn't. And third, I know in the realm of cartoon fantasy anything can happen, but the way Lisa was able to swap out that real dinosaur bone and put the painstakingly obvious fake one in its place with very little chance of the entire thing falling over... Eh, something about that sequence seemed very off-putting. Anyway, it's reasonable to conclude Lisa only lied about her discovery in order to get famous on television and keep being popular among her audience. She could have easily rectified the situation by telling the truth like she was going to do from the beginning, but all that attention she was getting was very influential to kids, and I totally get why she wouldn't want to give it up. Now, while it's undetermined if everything else she was demonstrating on her show was rooted in fact, which I can only assume at face value it was, and didn't lie about anything else, the 
fact is, she broke her trust with Dr. Alvarez. Still, this paleontologist had to admit she was good at inspiring kids, so there was still a dim but very noticeable silver lining in Lisa's path to redemption. She may not have gotten her show back, but she was going to start giving tours of the museum instead. I'm not sure if that's considered a punishment or not, but like I said a moment ago, Lisa most likely wasn't fabricating anything else on her show besides her backyard discovery, so I guess you can decide for yourself. Also, it seemed like Lisa technically got away with her lies since she had already passed off her fake bone as real. That's what the camera picked up before the dinosaur fell over, and there's never an official fallout after Lisa confesses to the doctor about her lie. A better ending would have been having her backyard bone to be revealed as a fake in front of a live audience, followed by a formal apology for lying, and where that lie ultimately led her, but we just couldn't have that, now could we? To wrap things up, there are three interesting things I noticed. First, Lisa uses a radiometric dating machine to determine what era her bone is from, and that's the same method Dr. Alvarez wanted to use at the museum. However, Lisa says the machine at the museum was going to use carbon dating. In the name of science, the machine at the museum could not have realistically determined what era the real fossil was from, because unlike radiometric dating, which can date fossils anywhere from 66 to 83 million years, carbon dating only goes back as far as 50,000 years. Looks like the writers goofed up their own facts. Whoops! Second, am I the only one who noticed how Todd was positioned in the evolution of man display? It was very humorous and a little foreboding if you think about it. I think we were all thinking the same thing, don't you think? And lastly, the way Lisa looks at the camera and says science reminded me of the way Magnus Pike says the same word in the song She blinded me with science! Now the running gag of using that song in my other reviews is finally paying off. Why did I make that a running gag? For one simple reason. Science! Yep, I just love that song. Overall, this episode is like an alternative version to House of Lies, only this time Lisa took what she learned previously and got a media deal out of it. The story was okay, but it was really lacking a little more than halfway through, mostly because of the overly convenient methods of pushing things forward like an unlocked museum door, the way the bones were switched on the dinosaur, and not making the most of past episodes when it comes to an unusual but more effective method of creating glue as we saw in Spell It Out. This was the first time Lisa deliberately withheld information about something in the field of science, a subject her character is based around. Again, I understand the desire to keep the gravy train rolling and how lying can have its benefits, which paid off for both her and the kids idolizing her. And technically, she was on the verge of getting away with everything if that dinosaur didn't collapse in the museum. But even if she went on camera with a fake bone and was forced to admit it was all a charade while everything else on her show was 100% true, it being found out she was trying to classify a rare dinosaur that never existed would place a lot of doubt and distrust in the minds of the children who praised Lisa as an inspirational genius. She should have admitted the truth while on the air regardless, but I guess the audience had to settle for an off-screen apology. Again, how convenient. In short, a lot of what she did to cover up her lie wasn't a good look for her character. It also wasn't a good look for Dr. Alvarez either, considering she got fooled by a five-year-old. And maybe Lisa needs to stick to the dream boat and cream puffs for a while like the rest of her siblings. You certainly can't go wrong there. With that said, I give The Loudly Bones a 7.3 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of The Loudly Bones. With the ending we got, I'm curious to see if Lisa being a tour guide will be brought up again the same way Lenny landed a job in Season 3 and has been brought up several times ever since. It's an intriguing thought, but I won't hold my breath. So what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Rita WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.